Joining us at the roundtable this month is Professor Glenn Hansen, who is retiring after three decades of service to the college. We talked to Diana Martinez, director of the Mackinac Art Center, about its upcoming summer performances. And we get cultured and take a visit to the opera. And we have another great giveaway for three of our lucky viewers. All that and much more coming up right now. Hello and welcome to this month's edition of Inside COD. I'm your host Nick Petrillo. And I'm Anna Pierczynski. Glenn Hansen has been a photographer for 40 years and gives his viewers images that share the experience of wherever he may be. His subjects have ranged from urban, suburban to rural. Since 1991, he has worked to make the photography program at the College of DuPage one of the best in the country. Hi Glenn. Hi. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Great to be with you. So tell us, tell us your origin story. How did you get into photography? I really was bitten by the bug. It was a, became a passion, so much so that uh, while I went to college and I was studying biology for environmental studies and things like that and wildlife management, I was spending a way, more time, way more time photographing. And by the time I reached my senior year, it was, okay, do I start all over again as an art major or do I finish as a biologist? I decided to get out of college. <laughs> uh, it was finish it up, move on, and I then came here. Uh, a couple years later to start really doing some photography and learn some things and just fell deeper in love with it. So uh, there have been photographers that have influenced me over the, over the years and that just fed that passion. Now as you're preparing to go on to the next step of your career, a lot of your students are also preparing to graduate and go on to the next step of their careers. What advice would you have for them? My advice would be, you know, really do a self-assessment of what, what it is that you want to do. What are you really passionate about? What do you want to follow? And understand that the first thing you do when you come out of the college is not going to be uh, your end. It's the start. And for our photography students, one of the things they need to learn is that the career as a photographer is a patchwork. It's a quilt that you're going to do a lot of different things and you're going to learn that you are not, do not have the final say. You're going to work for somebody else. And they have expectations of what has to be done, what you have to deliver. You have to understand that you are obliged to meet that responsibility. And, but if you always keep in mind that it is making photographic images that you love to do, it can turn into a very, very enjoyable career. But it's going to take time and it's going to take commitment to your passion. And just to reflect on your career a little bit more, what do you think has been your single biggest contribution to, to the college? I think my biggest contribution has been the photography program and the education that I've provided and shared in with the students because it is a, a collaboration. It's a symbiotic relationship. They give to me, I give to them. We grow together, but it's been the education, that experience of working with students that uh, has been what I feel is my greatest contribution is that. Giving them some more patches on that quilt? Yep, exactly. <laughs> uh, so the photography program has a, an event coming up next week. Uh, so can you tell us about uh, Photo Exposed? Photo Exposed is a, a great event that now showcases our graduating students. Uh, we have the students that are in the portfolio class that are now presenting their final work for the public to see, to receive feedback, but they're on display now as our, our ambassadors. And that's not the only event going on right now. I know down in Chicago you have some of your photo photographs being exhibited right now. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, there's a show down in Bridgeport that uh, our program specialist organized, and Frank organized this, and it's made up of students, alumni, faculty, community members down there that are working or um, professional photographers and so it's a great event it was uh, the opening was last Friday it's up for two weeks now uh, everybody should take a, an opt some time to go see it if they can it's good to see the other part of the world get into the city come out of the burbs go into the city it's uh, <laughs> active life in there uh, so you seem uh, relatively busy right now but uh, now that you're retired what do you plan on doing next I plan to just keep working photographs um, organizing some more shows. I've got um, decades of work that I've not had time to really analyze, but I'm most excited about making new images. Plan to hit the road soon, go make some more photographs, uh, then share those, 
do some writing, do some a uh, little bit of educating in, in workshops, Thank you. but uh, not a formal classroom role anymore. So it's, it's going to be exciting. But you'll still be sticking your nose in here, right? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to be one of those uh, retired faculty members that becomes a ghost. I'm going to be around, maybe haunting the place, but I will be around to, because uh, this has been a big part of my life. And just because I'm retiring doesn't mean I'm gone. Well, congratulations on your retirement, and we look forward to seeing you uh, the next time you come around to the school. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for joining us. It's been a pleasure. And remember, the photography program will be hosting Photo Exposed on Monday, May 7th from 6 to 8 p.m. in MAC 278. And coming up next, I find out what the MAC has planned for summer entertainment on campus. And later, we have a great giveaway for this month. But first, here's a look at your COD calendar of events. Want to see if the next Walt Disney is here at the college? Come to Animation Night and see student animation portfolios from COD and local high school students. The event is Tuesday, May 15th in the Belushi Performance Hall at the Mackinac Charts Center. Doors open at 6.30 and the screening begins at 7. Feeling green? Buffalo Theatre Ensemble will present Outside Mullinger, an Irish play about two star-crossed lovers from feuding families. Performances are from May 3rd to June 3rd, Thursdays through Saturdays at 8 p.m. and Sundays at 3 p.m. in the Playhouse Theatre. Tickets are $37. For tickets and information, visit atthemac.org. Been craving the sweet, sweet nectar of an informative lecture about bees? COD will host native bee expert Terry Meisel for Native Bees, Their Abundance and Importance at 5.30 p.m. on Monday, May 7th. Expect to hear all about Illinois' 400-plus species of bees and what you can do to help conserve them. Looking for some outside entertainment this summer? Then the Mackinac Arts Center has you covered. Joining us in the Belushi Performance Hall is Diana Martinez, the director of the MAC, to tell us more about some of the events they have planned this summer. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, so can you tell us about some of the summer entertainment that the Lakeside Pavilion has planned? Absolutely. Um, our, we do every Friday, we have a concert. And we have lined up so far, the New Philharmonic Orchestra is going to do an outdoor concert and it's very pops oriented, so it's very accessible. Everybody will enjoy the music. It's not going to be something like, oh, I don't, I don't relate to that. It's really fun. They'll do movie tunes, they'll do Broadway tunes, and it's, it's amazing. Um, that's one of our biggest concerts of the summer. We always kick off with American English. They're a Beatles tribute band that everybody loves. On Thursday nights, we do a jazz series. And WDCB Radio, the station manager picks out three awesome jazz artists and we feature them on Thursday nights. And then for the families and the children, we have a movie series, which is awesome. The kids come in their PJs a lot of times and we have popcorn and concessions and all the children come and we'll pick out three family movies. Uh, so last summer you had record numbers uh, in attendance. Uh, so what makes these events so special that so many people want to come out to? One, um, I think the venue is so beautiful. Two, uh, the sound is incredible because it's, it's done by our, our Mac team and the lighting and the sound and the production values are very high. It's not like a typical street fest, right? We bring all our equipment out there and do first class. So it's like a Ravinia type experience. Number three, the artists that we pick and the shows that we pick are not your typical um, uh, band that you might see at a street festival. They all have a little bit more of a performing arts quality and more of a polished, complete show, like we did Moving Out, that was a Broadway tour, um, the symphony, right? So they've all got a little step up on more production values, a tighter show, a real presentation, rather than a bunch of guys just singing music. Thank you so much for joining us, Diana. Uh, I can't wait to go to some of these events. They sound amazing. Thank you. For more information about showtimes and tickets, please visit atthemac.org or call 630-942-4000. Don't want to make the trip out to the Taste of Chicago? Then check out Taste of Glen Ellen. This family-friendly event will feature great food, live entertainment, and fun carnival rides. The Taste begins Thursday, May 17th, and will run until Sunday, May 20th. For more information, visit glenellenchamber.com. Get in the groove at Downers Grove's 29th Annual Groovin' in the Groove 5K. The race will take place on Saturday, May 12th at the Midwestern University Recreation and Wellness Center in Downers Grove. Proceeds from the event will go towards sharing connections 
an organization that provides donated furniture and household items to low-income families in the Chicago area. To register for the event, visit their website. Elements at Water Street, Naperville will be hosting their first ever Mother's Day brunch on Sunday, May 13th. Tickets for the brunch are $59 for adults and $29 for kids under 12. The ticket price will include gourmet breakfast options, stunning entrees, and unlimited French champagne. The deadline for reservations will be May 10th. To make a reservation today, call 630-717-2800 or visit Naperville's website. We're in trouble because this next package is music to my ears. We head to Downers Grove to learn all about one local opera group's sharp performances. We decided to form a new group that also had um, that was not just an orchestra, the previous group I was doing was orchestra. This one is both chamber orchestra and opera. So it has an opera mandate, so that's where we formed Symphonetta Bel Canto. Pretty much what our job is, is to reinforce what's going on on stage, to react to the leads, so that the audience can clearly read who is a villain and who's a good person. And in this particular production, we're all about supporting the bride and all about hating the groom. It's a lot of fun to play in the orchestra with the full sound developing and everything. Uh, I don't even know that I like so much to be the soloist, right? It's this group feeling, this, this whole feeling of getting it all together, getting some really good sound going. And so this is a wonderful experience. Well, the best part is uh, performing with old friends and uh, meeting new people, meeting new singers, uh, getting to work with the instrumentalists. It's, it's a great opportunity to, to be on the stage and have fun and learn a new show, perhaps. So, and it's a really nice work, very nice piece. It, it's, uh, it's very tuneful, very melodic. Um, so, we, so you get a great, great deal. It's open seating. You sit wherever you like. You get a full orchestra. You get the opera. Well, the better question is, why, why are you not coming? That would be the better question. <laughs> this month, the college's alumni relations was kind enough to donate the month's giveaway. But before we show the prize that one lucky viewer will receive, let's go over the rules. It's pretty simple. Go to our Facebook page, Courier TV, and like the May edition of Inside COD in our feed. Remember, it's the May edition, and you have until Tuesday, May 15th at noon to like the episode. This month, Alumni Relations has donated three Chaparral t-shirts, just like the one I'm wearing, for three lucky viewers. Now remember to visit our Facebook page at Courier TV and like the May edition of Inside COD in our feed for a chance to win one of these shirts by May 15th. Thanks again for joining us on this month's edition of Inside COD. We'll see you back here in the fall, and enjoy the summer.